हेलो 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 वेलकम बैक टू द फील गुड फैक्टर आई एम सुस्मिता वीगनो सोरस एंड आई एम सो ग्लैड यू कुड जॉइन मी हियर टुडे हे एवरीवन आई एम सुपर सुपर एक्साइटेड अबाउट टुडेस एपिसोड आई हैव टू गुड फ्रेंड्स ऑफ माइन हियर रिया रोड्रिगेस मुखर्जी एंड संयुक्ता कार्तिक Sam and Ria are two of my friends from the vegan Bangalore community. So that's how we met. All three of us are vegans, and that's what has brought us together. And that's how we built our friendship. Today, we wanted to discuss about uh, community, about non-violent communication, and all the positive benefits of being kind to each other. About women lifting each other up, and how we can all grow together. Ria is an author. She is one of my favorite authors. So. you have got to look her up and uh, check out her novel she founded and she runs a content creation firm called right leela right and then sam is a vegan chef she is trained in uh, raw food cooking as well as vegan cooking of course and um, she very recently started maybe 4 5 months ago an online vegan cooking school the first in india I'm going to share you and Sam's links here at the end of the episode anyway in the show notes so you can check them out. Yeah, get to know these ladies. Hey ladies. Hi Sushmita, thanks so much for your very kind words. <laughs> Hi Ria. Hello Sus, thanks so much for having us here and uh, yeah, I think it's um very exciting the things we're going to be talking about in this conversation and really happy to be here. Yes, Sam, it's great to have you here, and uh, even I'm really excited about what we're going to talk about. We're all part of the vegan community here in Bangalore, and not just in Bangalore, but in all of India, the community is still pretty small. It's growing. It's comparatively new when you look at it from the perspective of uh, other countries, Western countries, where veganism has grown drastically. Here, it is still growing. We're all here. to try to support each other and grow together and that's what we wanted to talk about today so ria can you share your thoughts about this yeah i you know i turned vegan when i was in 2016 may so it's been a few years and i think i actually and ashmita will probably you know allude to this because ashmita has been one of the definite uh, older vegans in the community has been you know a vegan for a long long time Uh, and uh, i came in right into this momentum where for indian standards especially in bangalore veganism was really getting into a, a really meaningful conversation as to what it meant to be vegan what was happening in terms of our food choices especially within us in the you know in the privileged lot and um, we got i mean people like me who turned vegan in 2016 got access to a lot of new products a lot of new young energy that was coming in with entrepreneurial vision products discussions fests it was an exciting time i think i got the easy part of being vegan in bangalore uh, and so smita can probably have a lot more to say about that <laughs> absolutely you got in at a good time because the, you know anybody who says uh, today that oh it's difficult to be vegan and there are not many options i just laugh at their faces <laughs> because i've seen what it was like you know 17 years ago when i turned vegan and there was nothing and we had to make a lot of stuff for ourselves Yeah, you got into it at the right time for sure. And Sam, what's your journey like? How did you go vegan? Oh, for me, it's been five years now, and uh, yeah, it's been very interesting. I I remember. I mean, I've grown up vegetarian my whole life. I've been vegetarian, but yeah, I started making this connection around five years back when I was still in college, and kind of just went vegan overnight. And ever since then, it's just been very very interesting, especially in India. to see how you know the vegan community slowly been building and growing and there's so many entrepreneurs and everyone's just doing so many different things in their own unique ways and just to further mm-hmm. build the movement and it's it's been extremely inspiring for me and back then i was still working in a as a designer at a company mm-hmm. and i over time i kind of realized that i wanted to do something much more you know to contribute to the movement so yeah the transition also happened in the last few years and now i've completely dedicated my life to helping the animals and uh, do this 
in my own way. So yeah, it's, it's been very interesting. And for everyone who's listening, if you're wondering what all the nature sounds are, Sam is sitting in <laughs> Oroville, which is a very, very beautiful place. And it's lush with nature. But then, of course, you also hear birds and crickets in the background. <laughs> yes. So it's going to be a different ambience to our talk today. <laughs> yes, a little out of my control. <laughs> yes. No, right no, it sounds nice. It sounds like we're all sitting, you know, in a garden and just having this nice chat over tea. You know, it gives that kind of a feel. So I'm liking it. <laughs> Music to our ears. <laughs> Ladies, what do you feel in terms of the vegan uh, community and uh, especially how people support each other? What do you think the state is in Bangalore or uh, generally in India? So I think that, like I said, when I came into, get, got more and more interested within the vegan community and seeing what's going on, a lot of exciting things were happening, right? For example, people were coming out with different vegan products. There were a few vegan fests that went on in the last couple of years. That really got the conversation going. As a byproduct of this, we were sharing a lot of information, getting inspired. A lot of people, even, even if you look at social media, we were getting more and more confident in expressing how we came into veganism, the intersections of animal rights within all these other causes that people like us are invested in as humans, you know, growing up in this little ecosystem over here. I think for the most part, Susmita, I think it's been a very positive and exciting time where we're all having this kind of domino effect on each other, except for right now, because right now there's so much stuff happening in the world. <laughs> yeah. But I think, yeah, especially if you look into, you know, the last couple of years, there's been so much going on in content creation and uh, even uh, publications, right, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So it's it's definitely been a part and let Samyukta talk also about this, but um, we'll get a little bit more into the fact that, you know, as Human beings, we are still, we still have the same follies that we can, you know, when we're, when we're trying to get inspired by certain spaces and trying to elevate our own voices, mm -hmm. we tend to follow this culture that I believe that this is my opinion that we've all been brought up in, which is this scarcity mindset that we have to either mm -hmm. keep up with the rest or take from the rest in order to have validity for ourselves. And I, I mean, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but yeah, I just want to put that out there. Yeah, that is true. And uh, I agree with you that, I mean, r regardless of the scarcity mindset and the way people think like, okay, you have to probably pull somebody else down to go up or at least take away from them to go up. That is there. I mean, it's not just an India specific thing. And it's not definitely not a vegan community specific thing. It's there all over the world that does happen. And even there, I see a huge shift in people's mindset and I'm seeing more and more, especially in the recent years, the knowledge, this whole awareness about being collaborative versus being competitive. You know, that is rising and it's very, very beautiful to see that. And uh, you're right, there have, of course, been instances of people trying to grow by maybe not allowing others to do so. But also, I feel very happy to say that there are very, very few people who do that anymore. And it's become more and more people trying to grow together, support each other and go up. So yeah, the awareness for the importance of community is definitely coming along. But then what you said about the scarcity mindset, changing the mindset to an abundance one is something we all definitely need to talk about. Because that will encourage everyone to follow that path, which is kinder and loving towards everyone. So Sam, what do you feel? Yeah, sis, I completely agree. And especially in this vegan community, everyone is kind of striving to reach the same goal. We all are, most of us are in it to help the animals or to improve human health. It's, it's all of these different areas that are coming together and we all are kind of working towards the same goal. Speaking as someone who is very active on Instagram or on social media, I can say that, you know, I've seen so many different brands in this field lifting one another up and supporting each other. And I think it's, it's just very beautiful to see that. And like Ria said, yes, for the most part, this is what you notice. But I guess, as with any creative field, you do have to adapt and draw your inspiration from, from some point of reference. And I guess... There are times when maybe we're a little imperfect in the way some of us do this. And I think, yeah, I think there is a lot that can be worked on. And um, yeah, I think that's why we're having this conversation. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And Sam, what you said makes sense in terms of I am also seeing so many people, businesses lifting each other up, but it is definitely a conversation we need to have. And uh, Ria, since especially you're into content creation and you are an author yourself, I'm sure you've come across the whole, like Sam said, you have to draw inspiration from somewhere, but where is the line between being inspired from someone and then ripping right off from them? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So this really comes down to something that all of us experience because of the world. Like you said, this happens all over the world. Part of it is, you know, some of our socialization. I mean, if you look at, uh, you know, even Bangalore startups, for example, so forget just the vegan committee, just look at Bangalore startups, because you know, Bangalore is startup heaven, right? At least before COVID. But you know, people over there are always so cautious about their idea. And when I talk about writing in my workshops, the first thing I address is that, You know, guys, we really need to internalize the idea that there is no original idea. First of all, all ideas, foundations of thought are all technically collaborative in a sense because they all come from so many different intersections. So when you have an idea, it's not technically original. What is original is how you go about implementing it, doing it, standing by the values and vision that you have. For example, I have an Instagram channel that's Messy Cooking Always Vegan. There is nothing inherently original about being a person who is sharing vegan food on Instagram. Absolutely not. There are 5 million other people doing it. <laughs> yeah. But it is my imprint on how I decide to write my copy, how I update the people, what I choose to showcase, right? There's nothing inherently original about having a vegan restaurant, yeah. which you do. So, but you have a completely different appeal in the community. Why? It's because of how you specifically talk to people, communicate on your social media channels, how the people at Carrots talk to you, treat you, communicate and connect with you. It's all in a very, in a very unique way. And that is the uniqueness which people need to embrace because we are taught from a school level to either copy a template, which is why a lot of plagiarism that happens all over the spectrum, no matter what community you're from comes from that sense of insecurity that I need to go and look outside and take something and put it back out there. And that's what will make it work because I've seen it before. We always need this evidence of a template. Mm. Even if the template is crap, we still want that template, even if it's crap, you know, which is why there's so much of content mediocrity that we see. Because people are just so scared of just embracing their own unique way of putting something out there. Yeah, that's true. And I think, you know, you bring a very solid point about how each person's style, that that unique style and their own spirit and their essence, Mm -hmm. that being added to an idea is what makes the idea special. So it's not just the idea itself, but just their own touch, their own special way of looking at things, way of communicating, way of being, way of living life, that is what brings an idea or brings any project its own uh, value. So Sam, what do you feel about that? And how do you feel you can deal uh, with in case somebody is not aware of community, is not being as uplifting to each other as they should be, or if somebody is maybe plagiarizing an idea or copying something off of you? How do you feel we can even handle that knowing, yes, you know, we are unique and what I offer is unique, but still, if somebody rips off from you, you know, it's not a very nice feeling. So Sam, how do you feel something like that can be handled? So, you know, I just think very often the solution can be really simple. And I think it's just the little things like giving credit, giving credit to people where credit is due and also just communicating openly and honestly and effectively. This reminds me of how I started building UMA. And this was when I was ideating and I was like, how do I do this in a way that, you know, is original? It's its its own thing. And I had obviously I had done my culinary training with uh, Matthew Kenny Cuisine and I kind of had a point of reference. So I did do a one month online course and I, I knew I was aware that, you know, this is how an e-learning platform is laid out and this is how somebody out there has created it. And it was very, very inspiring for me. And that's when I decided that I wanted to create something like that myself. But there was a fine balance between, you know, just taking something that, that somebody else has created and kind of and making my own version of it. And if you go into my course, the online course that I have, there are recipes that have been inspired and adapted from others and little bits of, you know, explanations that are given here and there. 
but I've always linked back to a blog or, or any source of where I got that content from or where I adapted it from. And I think that's so important. And it's something that gets very easily missed. Yeah. So I just think giving credit, mm. it's, it's just so important. And not only is that important, it builds our community. Even if I watched a YouTube video on a recipe and then made it my own and I've linked it back, I've become friends with those people. Yeah. You know, and then the community spirit actually grows because when you're giving credit, you're actually building your network and community and spirit of where you're all coming from. And I think that's the most beautiful part. Yeah. Yeah, for any content creator, okay, it's different that, yes, when you build an online course or anything else, of course, you are also doing it to earn your living in the long run through that content. But then no matter whatever purpose the content is created for, whether it is for a business or not for a business, whatever the reason, the thing that a content creator uh, appreciates most is when they know that somebody else appreciates their work and not only that, they are inspired by their work. So actually, Mm -hmm. a lot of content creators, we feel happy if somebody says they are inspired by us. So it's such a simple solution. Like you said, Sam, like you just give credit and then of course you feel attached to that person immediately, right? You feel like, oh, you know, they love the work and they're sharing it and, you know, they're talking about it. And it's not exactly them mentioning your name itself that is going to touch your heart, but more so that, they're doing it very, very openly and they are sharing it with the world. So when they're sharing their own work, it's like as if they're sharing your work also with the world. Yeah. <laughs> so it feels really, really good. And uh, the scarcity mindset, the abundance mindset, what uh, you were talking about. Rhea, we know we should get a little more deeply into this because it will help people overcome this idea of competition. Yes. I'll just give a little bit of a, my own little story mm. related to this. When Carrots was started in India, it was the first in the country. It was the first vegan restaurant in the country. We were way ahead of the curve. Like in 2013, nobody really knew, not too many people knew about vegan food or cared about it. And there were a lot more myths and misconceptions related to it than it is now. So it was like, as it is, there's like this one vegan place. And then in about a year's time, somebody else started another vegan uh, restaurant too. And from the outside, the question that often came to us, particularly to Carrot's founder Krishna was, you know, oh, now you have competition. Now you have somebody else serving vegan food. And um, initially, when your business is struggling, you're going to be insecure if another similar business comes out, right? But Krishna is one of those really kind people and the way he thinks and sees the world is very different. And he just had a very simple answer to every single person. He's like, you know what? We are not competition to each other. We are community. Our competition are businesses which don't have any principles, like all these fast food places and stuff, you know? (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, that that just switched the whole thing. It made the new person also not feel wary to come to us, talk to us and share with us. Because see, in this whole world, you are only two of you. Or at that point, it was two of us. But now maybe there are 10 of us who are in this whole world of not conscious businesses who don't really care about health or environment or any other causes, in that you are this handful of people who are creating something for a higher purpose. Like Sam said, we all care about animal rights. We care about something and that is the reason we are doing this. So when such a small set of people come together, then it's so important that we realize that, okay, there's plenty out there and we need, in fact, more of us because there's way too much abundance of non-vegan people who we want to make aware of vegan food and convert them, right? (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. So like, I feel like, you know, that's such a great story. And I I think kudos to Krishna, because I think a lot of his values and vision that is complemented by your way of thinking also really shows, right? Because it extends to the community. Even what you guys do with your uh, people who work at Carrots, the staff at Carrots is very revolutionary in terms of it's a real community over there. You know, you're not sitting over there and talking to them about, you know, how to get the food the fastest way and get people in and out. It's really about uh, obviously trying to sustain your business, but at the same time, never compromising on the teamwork and the sense of community within that ecosystem that you have. And because of that, there's a certain confidence that Carrots always maintains, no matter what the situation is. And it's the heart of, for a lot of Bangalorean vegans, it's it's a, it's a big heart for us. It's a big pull because of that. I think that extends to this, you know, idea of scarcity mindset that no matter what you're doing, whether you're writing a story, whether you're starting a new business, or you have an idea for a product, or you want to start your own a school, whatever it is, 
if you go in with the mindset saying who are my competitors first of all do you know how abundant the universe is in terms of people there are types of people and there are sub kinds of people and there there are a million opportunities existing at all times but what you need to be able to do is align with who you are and be comfortable in that so i i mean i run a small content and design lat- uh, laboratory with my partner kala and we've been at this for going to be 6 years now we've never looked at what we consider competitors because we know what we do and we consistently just stay there so during our lows of business also we're very happy as to know what we do why we do it and that ironically paradoxically is what sustains us even through the low points because we know our place we don't shift because oh okay that's what other people are doing right now okay so we're going to go and try to use the same hashtags and try to promote ourselves in the same way <laughs> yes and that what that's going to do is just never be comfortable with yourself and if you're comfortable with yourself mm. even through the low points and if you can maintain that sense of there is always opportunity the more i align with who i am and what my vision is and what i want to give out there paradoxically there it is i can't explain it in any better way but there it is So true. Like from day one, I joined Carrots a little about ten months after the restaurant was open. So initially, I was one of those enthusiastic guests, and then I turned into one of the owners. So from day one, I've always been more about embracing the uniqueness of what we offer versus trying to go out and uh, do what the rest of the world is doing. Mm-hmm. Whether it comes to the way of marketing, the way of presenting the food, or our classes, or our service, or anything like that. we aren't trying to be like anyone else we're just trying to be as authentic to ourselves as we possibly can and what you said aligns exactly with that when you are being authentic then there's nothing to worry about because you're feeling happy you're being yourself fine so we've clarified that yes it is important for people to look at this whole thing from a community perspective from a consciousness perspective about how we can all lift each other up grow together but what happens if somebody doesn't do that mm-hmm. so of course there are going to be people who aren't yet in alignment with the abundance mindset they still would have a scarcity mindset and they still would believe that no i need to stand out among my peers mm-hmm. <laughs> in a way that i have to put the peers down or maybe rip off from them so what if somebody does that even not whether it is sometimes intentionally or even unintentionally how would, how would you deal with something like that like i want to hear this from both of you sam and ria like what do you feel so sam you go like if you've had an experience or if yeah. you feel like okay somebody has really not been ethical enough so how would you handle something like that yes i have had a few uh, experiences in the past like where you feel cheated in a way and um I I don't know I think I've just over the years I've learned different ways to to deal with such situations and I think my huge learning is that mm-hmm. rather than being reactive as soon as you find out something or like you feel like somebody has copied you or plagiarized I don't know instead of just jumping at this person and and accusing them and pointing fingers you take your time and and really process your your own feelings I think this is a very like a very human process it can be applied to so many different areas of our lives mm-hmm. and i just think sitting with our feelings for some time and really figuring out how to approach this person rather than making it a huge ugly confrontation just communicating openly and gently like i said i think it just really goes a long way mm-hmm. and um, yeah the different experiences i've had can they kind of speak for themselves cuz i can definitely see the difference That's very good to know and it sounds hopeful that you've tried to communicate openly and that it has paid off well because generally you would believe if somebody is capable of say copying content or one business putting another down in some way or any of these things it's very natural for us to think that oh there there will be no use talking to them so it's very you know it makes me happy to hear when you say that you did attempt to talk to them yeah after chewing on your feelings for a while so that you don't react and then it paid off that makes me so happy to hear and that speaks of how all of us generally innately want to be good and kind 
Yeah. Yeah. It does take a certain amount of, I guess, practice, self-awareness to be able to even communicate that way. And Mm -hmm. it's a huge learning for sure. I know nobody likes to have fingers pointed at them, you know, and you just don't want to do or say something that will make the other person defensive. Instead, just speak and just approach them Mm -hmm. in a way that, yeah, works in for everybody's in everybody's best interest. That sounds very nice. (laughs) Ria, what about you? What do you, what thoughts would you like to share regarding this? Yeah, I mean, what Samikta said about, you know, not first being reactive, which is the hardest thing to do, right? Because obviously Mm -hmm. you feel something and I've seen my work plagiarized in several forms before. And, you know, before uh, a few years ago, I'd be very reactive about it. But then what it's exactly Samikta's learning curve, which is where I realized that first of all, yes, it has to be acknowledged. So a lot of people kind of confuse the idea that, you know, not being reactive somehow means you just shut up. You don't necessarily have to shut up. So you said something very important inherently and I would say 95% of people actually want to be good they want to tap into Mm. their compassionate side they want to tap into their more benevolent and uh, rational side that is a human thing to be a part of good so when you're able to articulate yourself and have that self-awareness and say hey so this happened and can we work this out in a way because this is how I felt and you know, put across your boundaries in a gentle way and say like, this is where I felt uncool and I'd really like to have this a more supportive relationship with you. And with your words, you already somehow communicate to that person that's saying, I'm not out here to go and, you know, tag you on social media and call you out. <laughs> you inherently say that with your tone. And if you're able to do that, most of the time, 95% of the time, people will react positively and work with you. But I would like to say there is that 5%. (laughs) And I think we should be, we should understand when, and because that could happen at any time. That can happen later on in our lives too, right? Where there are people who are uh, unscrupulously unethical, incorrigibly so. And, you know, I'm not going to psychoanalyze them, but I'm just saying there are people who are just not going to change whatever. If you want to call it their own trauma that they can't process or whatever it is, they're just, there are shitty, shitty human beings and it doesn't matter if they're vegan or not. It can be they're human beings capable of... Oh, yeah. And at that point, what do you do? It really depends on the situation. The biggest, the most important place is how do you disengage from that energy as much as possible? How do you distance yourself from that? Mm. So you don't even have to engage with something like that. And those would be probably the first primary steps I would take Yeah. in a situation like that. The disengaging from the energy, you're so right. That is so important because Mm -hmm. whether you are uh, standing up and fighting against it or whatever it is, if it's somebody who cannot be communicated with in the sense of they are not at all in alignment with or in the spirit of the community. Right. Then making sure to cut them out of your life as much as possible. That is very, very important because that energy otherwise will drain you out, like completely drain you out. And then what we are out to do is good in the world and we won't be able to do that if we allow somebody else's energy to drain us out right yeah I think paradoxically also that's what makes us human and and, and I think this is a step you know to disengage because it took me many years Mm -hmm. to understand the value of disengaging because there's some human part of us that validates our ego by fighting something out right when it cannot be fought when it cannot be fought Mm -hmm. So when it cannot be part because that person is not going to change, but we're trying to validate either our sense of righteousness or our sense of ethics or our sense of, no, I need to make this right. I need people to know this. And what happens is that you're actually fighting with yourself. And like you said, you're not able to actually create or co-create again because of this or you're caught up within this thing because somewhere Mm -hmm. our brain is also addicted to the drama. And Mm -hmm. this this is a hard part to disengage with and say, I'm okay by myself, by me. I don't need that drama to add a layer of validation to me. Yeah. If that mm-hmm. makes any sense. But I think for me, this was a big learning. True, true. I can share an experience where uh, when we started off in the beginning, we were also learning mm-hmm. things and you'd think it's a small community, so everyone's going to be supportive and whatnot. But like you said, it doesn't matter whether you're vegan, not vegan, there are all kinds of humans. So yep. we had somebody who continuously, they use their popularity or their connections to always speak against us and other vegan businesses mm-hmm. behind our backs and just criticize the way we were doing things. And just because there are certain things that they believed in, which we didn't align with, or probably they just wanted the attention for whatever reason. And no amount of really positively trying to handle things would yeah. lead anywhere. It just wouldn't lead anywhere with this particular person because 
uh, we realized that this person was all about themselves and you know about the drama like you said the addiction to the drama the narcissism wanting to be loved but feeling that they cannot be loved unless they're putting somebody else down right and you know the disengaging what you said like not at all reacting to them ultimately just ignoring them after a point and like okay you do what you want you say what you want feel be confident with what we're doing right that kind of disconnection it really helped it really brought in a lot of fresh energy to us versus sitting and worrying about oh my god what damage is this person doing to our business which in the beginning was struggling quite a bit yeah. and that such an important thing so one is you try to communicate with love but then if somebody isn't really responding to that then you just cut them out of your life to the maximum extent possible so then that energy what happens is your energy isn't weakened so that kind of a negative energy is not going to touch you very badly yeah absolutely and i remember this these few months that i was also quite outraged by the negativity of this person that because they were doing it to a few businesses yours included very strategically and i remember also being caught up in the thing like how can they do this what is going on and let's get to know more details about this and <laughs> and then you realize no you do and you realize that that is that cyclical you know need for details and and drama even if you feel like you're right in the right space mm. but that was doing really nothing in terms of hurting any of these businesses in what they inherently were and were just doing yeah yeah you know and and that learning curve that learning curve is a beautiful one when you get there <laughs> uh, it was for me yeah. because you just realize how pointless the drama is because at some point even the drama even for me it's almost like it comes from a place of righteousness but righteousness is not being it's not just being you know if that makes any sense and being and doing what you do best that is beautiful like it comes from a place of righteousness but righteousness is not yeah. being that's just yeah. so inspirational yeah. <laughs> yeah. of course you're an author you're one of my favorite authors so of course you said these words <laughs> i'm just happy i'm getting to talk to you in person and hear you say this on my show you know <laughs> oh boy sam is there any advice so when we are new when we are just starting out we are more affected by these kind of energies where people are doing maybe something unethical or not being supportive we tend to feel emotionally affected more at that point when we are just starting out because you know we are new and of course there will be some amount of insecurity there when you're starting out right yeah. but later as you grow and as you grow into your own confidence you are like okay i don't care no matter what anyone says i am who i am and this is what i'm offering and i'm growing and that that's much easier to say later yeah, on after a few years sure. but not right at the beginning right yeah sam so right at the beginning i know it's not easy to let go so what do you feel like because especially because your online culinary academy is really new so what do you feel like how would you handle yeah this kind of a situation well you know the academy is new but i i have as a vegan chef i feel like i've been in this field of work for a while now and and so i think in these years i have grown mm-hmm. that confidence to to be able to say hey i know what i'm doing i know i know what i'm good at and i'm going to continue to do this no matter what mm-hmm. so so i feel even though the academy is new i've learned how to kind of how to deal with any roadblocks uh, most roadblocks that come you know Oh, okay so mm-hmm. let me rephrase my question what advice would you give to somebody who is new and have somebody who is probably been around for longer or maybe somebody else who's newer than them also whoever it is yeah if there is some kind of a negative energy or some kind of a copyright in- infringement or some kind of a putting down behind your back any of this kind of stuff what advice would you give to somebody who's starting off on how they can handle things and take things into stride <laughs> yeah yeah this is a tough one i just i don't know it's really tricky right like i guess everyone just kind of has their own mm-hmm. unique skills to offer and you just have to i guess my advice to anyone would be to just tell them to keep going and to keep doing what they are good at and not getting into comparisons and mm-hmm. yeah it's it's a very this is silly silly analogy but it's like especially in this community in the vegan community think of each little business as a different fruit you know <laughs> it sounds very silly but it's um, not silly oh, that's sweet. nice it's like different fruits and like an apple is an apple and like tastes sweet and like there's an orange which also tastes sweet and like amazing but it's an orange and if an orange is going to it sounds really silly i know but it's um i think it can be applied it's not <laughs> it's not it's you know what sam simple analogies work best they're not at all silly because that's what people will really relate to right um, <laughs> so yeah it's it's 
yeah we're all <laughs> sweet fruits you know like <laughs> yeah. that's that's, yeah. that's very nice what i want to add uh, as an advice to anybody whether you're starting out or whether you're going ahead like your way ahead like many years down the line there is something that we all still do share right when it comes to these things like uh, how we might feel triggered at first and then we'll have to think about it and then we'll have to communicate effectively or ignore the person all this becomes much easier to do when you have a support system oh yeah so mm-hmm. i feel like talking yeah. to friends talking you know make connections within your own community people who are on similar boats as you maybe on different timeline but still similar doing similar conscious work you know i don't mean you have to find another vegan to talk to it could also be somebody else who cares enough about a cause that they are making their lives work in connection yeah. to that cause so find people who are in the same boat and build this uh, sisterhood you know <laughs> where we can talk to each other you have somewhere where you know that they will hold a safe space for you you know make these friends who you know will hold a safe space for you and will not judge you at whatever point when you share something and you can vent but also you can count on support and uh, probably even really good advice and ideas i feel that community within community you know <laughs> yeah it's so valuable to have that and this this kind of takes me back to even just me turning vegan i remember when uh, i just I was just transitioning and I had just on vegan I think it had just been about a year and I had this group of friends who were very very nasty to me about me being vegan everyone was just always making fun of me and we had this whatsapp group and everyone would send memes and jokes on veganism and then after a point I was just like okay it's time to disengage like we spoke about this earlier mm-hmm. I just switched off and then I started connecting with people in this community and finding that support system finding my tribe you know building that yeah just that sense of community and support and i think yeah it's the same the same applies to uh-huh. anybody who's running a business it's just it's very valuable <laughs> to all phases of life yeah, yeah support system is uh, it's so important yeah and uh, when you said where you cut off from the people who are nasty to you and then more people yes. support system came into your life so again that is so important to constantly keep clearing out any negative energy or relationships from your life and you know disconnect from these things which are even i won't even say negative but things which are not even a kind of relationships which are not even useful for your future or growth anymore you know not serving yes exactly not serving you anymore cutting them out cleansing that out of your life creates this beautiful space which will attract what you really need yep as long as you have these unnecessary connections what happens is or or even harbor any resentment or anger or any of these energies low vibe energies the longer you do that the space won't be there for this good stuff to come to you even if it wants to come to you <laughs> yeah absolutely i 100% agree with that hmm. Ria Sam is there anything else you'd like to add anything else you'd like to say in relation to this whole topic that we're discussing today about conscious community and communication and building support systems and letting go everything you know anything at all you'd like to add No I I was just thinking that especially in India and in the Indian context veganism I feel is still fairly new and businesses are only just starting to grow and and you know increase in numbers and i think it's a very very crucial time for us to understand how important it is to to lift each other up and yeah so i yeah i just think that it's a very important conversation yeah for this moment yeah i agree and i just want to end with my thoughts on the fact that you know what i some i thought there was a great metaphor of saying that we're different fruits <laughs> you know and if we're in a position to really know what fruit we are in absolute detail and just be that fruit then what inevitably happens is like suppose you're an orange sam and you know susmita you are a banana what inevitably happens is that you know susmita is so busy being a banana when somebody comes to her and says who oh, i could do with something tart then you know susmita says that you know maybe i the banana is not the best fit you should try this orange yeah and there is no lack of it because people who need a banana will always be there and people who want oranges will always be there and if you can internalize that that's it and it's so nice the power of collaboration you come together and just make amazing smoothies you know with all the different fruits mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. banana yeah. orange smoothie will be quite yummy <laughs> true <laughs> <laughs> and maybe people for that too right that mix yep yeah. so there you go yeah. exactly
good that's been a lovely conversation ladies and i feel so happy that you both made the time to come here and all of us had a chance to discuss this i'm looking forward to having uh, you all more on my podcast too and there is so much that we could all share we could all discuss and you know in multiple perspective again today also it's a smoothie because we have you know different points of view different perspectives and everything coming together and right. kind of becoming one by the end of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah sam can you tell everybody how they can connect with you if they want to look you up online where can they find you what's your instagram handle and stuff like that oh yeah okay so on instagram we are you may culinary that's y u m e dot culinary you may means dream or vision for anyone who's curious and it's my dream and vision to see the world becoming more and more plant based and that's that's why it's named you may and our website is uh, you may culinary.com cool and ria you can find me on all three main social media channels i'm messy cooking underscore always vegan on instagram i am ria rodriguez mukerji on facebook and i'm sure shushmita will have the my spelling of my name on the notes <laughs> yeah yeah and i'm uh, at casu cutlet uh, on twitter so there you have it <laughs> Uh, and you can reach me on any of those forums great and of course everyone ria has a lovely blog also called messy cooking always vegan so look it up for uh, lots of yummy yummy vegan recipes <laughs> and of course uh, sam's the instagram account you'll see it for yourself it's filled with very very beautiful elegantly designed photographs of food that mm-hmm. she creates and you know it's just nice to go and just look at everything that is there on the profile <laughs> yep I hope you all enjoyed listening to our discussion today and you all know where to get in touch with me. I'm Veganosaurus on Instagram, V-E-G-A-N-O-S-A-U-R-U-S. I would love to hear your thoughts on this or any episode of The Feel Good Factor. And of course, you can also find my website, which is www.veganosaurus.com and you'll find other ways to connect with me from there. Thank you all for listening. Bye, ladies. Bye, Sushmita. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much. It was lovely. If you've been enjoying The Feel Good Factor, I would really appreciate a review, a subscribe, or rating on your preferred podcast app. Or you can even leave reviews for each episode that you like on podchaser.com. All you need to do is go to podchaser.com slash veganosaurus to find my podcast there thank you so much for listening to this episode of the feel good factor i'm susmita veganosaurus and i'm looking forward to talking to you again very soon bye